Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and I am here today with lesson number four on learning the SketchUp CAD design software. What we are going to do today is we are going to be designing a simple three-dimensional object <clears throat> and then we're going to print it on the 3D printer because what I want these lessons, I don't want these lessons to be just like, oh, draw this, draw this, draw this. You're just drawing these things and you're never getting that practical experience of, of kind of the workflow that you have in mechanical engineering. <clears throat> that workflow being Typically, you'll start start by just sketching a concept on paper. Then after that, you go into the CAD program like uh, like SketchUp, and you actually do the three-dimensional design. Then you go into fabrication, and then after fabrication, you go to evaluation or measurement or testing. We've already done this kind of once. Remember, in Lesson 3, we designed a very simple cube. And then we printed the cube out and then we came in and tested it with the calipers. <clears throat> so we're going to do that again today, but this time we're going to be using a little bit more design skill, a little bit more features, learning a little bit more about designing in three dimensions. But as we go through these tutorials, what I always want to do is I always want to do that kind of sketch, design, fabricate, and then test. Okay, so enough of this nonsense talking. Let's jump right in and say what we're going to do. <clears throat> this cube was one inch by one inch by one inch that we did in the last lesson. Now I want to make a cube that is, well, it's not a cube, it's going to be a rectangular block box, one inch by one inch, but this time by three inches, okay? And then what I want to have is coming off of the top face, I want to have a peg coming out, and I want that peg to have a radius of seven and a half millimeters and I want it to be centered uh, uh, widthwise on the uh, on the face and then I want to have a small rectangular box coming out and then I want a small rectangular hole and then I want a round hole okay so we're gonna be learning a lot more about design but what we need to do is we need to start start <clears throat> by just doing our drawing okay our conceptual drawing okay so we are going to be working in millimeters so roughly what we are going to say is it's going to be 25 by 25 by 75 millimeters now when I'm designing I had better get out of your way there we go <clears throat> I like to draw on graph paper and then I like to have roughly kind of an idea for a scale and so since I want 25 millimeters it would make sense for each tick mark to be five millimeters and so if I draw like this one edge is going to be 25 millimeters <clears throat> okay it is very hard for me to draw without covering up what you see this edge is going to be 75 millimeters okay <clears throat> then we'll finish up the rectangle all right now I want a circle and I want that circle to have a radius of seven and a half millimeters or a diameter of 15 now why is that nice because it'll fit nicely if this is 25 and the diameter is 15 then that leaves 10 well if I split the 10 between the top and the bottom I would have like five here and I would have five here so this is going to be five millimeters this is going to be five millimeters and similarly here that is going to be five <clears throat> from the edge and then it would be five from that edge and so if I just put a circle the edge will be five from each of the edges of the boxes. Now I need to think a little bit about where this center point is because I'll need to have a nice center point. So let's think about that. If it's five and seven and a half, that would be twelve and a half. Twelve and a half from this edge and then it's going to be 12 and a half from that edge because it's seven and a half plus five <clears throat> is 12 and a half. Same thing over here. I'll just go a little faster on this one. It's symmetric on this side that this dimension is going to be 12 and a half and uh, this dimension 
is going to be 12 and a half and then the radius is seven and a half <clears throat> what I've spent two or three minutes sketching this out but it's going to make the design go so much faster same thing with the rectangles I want the rectangle to be 5 by 15 okay and so this side is 5 this side is 15 and then this dimension it's 5 from the edge in this dimension it's five from the edge and same thing here I want to kind of keep it symmetric so this line is five from the edge of the circle come over another five and then this is going to be five by fifteen and then this dimension here is five so you see just by kind of thinking through it I don't end up with something kludgy and all over the place. I end up with something kind of nicely proportioned. And so you want to think about this before you even open up your design software, or at least that's what I like to do. The only other thing that would be useful would be if we kind of drew, uh, that's a top view. Let's draw, draw a side view of what we're trying to do here. And on a side view, still the circle is, is five from the edge. So I'll start here. And I want to come down 15 millimeters and then it's still 15 across and come up okay and so this is 5 and the critical dimension here is it's going to be 15 deep then this rectangular hole which is this one is going to be 15 deep and then here I come down and I'm going I did not draw that oh yeah that's that's right then this one isn't going to go down this one's going to come up in this dimension is 15 and this one this circle is going to come up okay and it's going to be 15 so you see from this rough sketch I'm 15 high I'm 15 down I'm 15 high I'm 15 down I come 5 over to the edge of the circle 15 for the circle then 10 over to this one 5 5 5 10 15 and 5 and that adds up to 75 do you see why I'm doing this in millimeters millimeters are small enough and they allow me to work in round numbers and I really like that okay let's see if we can design this thing in uh, let's see if we can design this <clears throat> this thing in SketchUp and so we need to come over here and we need to fire up SketchUp so we come here SketchUp boom boom okay there it goes all right now you we want to make sure that we're working in the same unit so take just a second here and choose uh, choose template okay and then make sure that you're working in millimeters and then say start using SketchUp okay so we are going to get rid of this guy so we click the selection tool and then we select him right we click the selection tool and we select him now we are going to click delete and he is gone okay now I want to start my design I want to start my design by drawing this rectangle I guess I need to point here this rectangle it's 75 <clears throat> by 25 so let's start with that what do I do I go back to this view okay I get the rectangle tool I move it until it pops into the corner it pops into the corner right I need to see that I'm at the origin I click once and I come out an arbitrary amount and what do I say I want 75 so I type in 75 comma 25 and then 75 comma 25 then enter uh oh it went away why did it go away <clears throat> because remember that guy he was to scale and so I'm way way too far away I need to zoom in let me show you how I zoom I zoom with the mouse wheel by just rolling the mouse wheel but let me show you a little trick if you get the hand up here and then you hold the hand over the origin it will zoom now I'm zooming it will zoom holding that in place if I had the hand over here you see I'm gonna lose because it's zooming around that point so I want to zoom around this point actually can pull it over a little bit that looks good I would actually like to design more or less from the top so I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna click on the house and that will take me to the top I probably did that too soon because I probably want to go ahead and extrude this into a rectangle I'm gonna go ahead and make this a three-dimensional object and then I'll be drawing on the top 
face. And so how do we make this a three-dimensional object? I showed you, I think, 27 different ways in lesson number uh, two and three, but we're going to do the easiest way, which is we will come up and we will get the push-pull tool. We will come down here, we will click, and then we will pull up. Do we care how far we pull up? No, we just pull up and then click again and now type in what the dimension that we wanted was. What was the dimension that we wanted? Remember, it's going to be 25 high. It's going to be 25 high. So we come back over here and then we type in 25 and enter. Okay, so now what do I have? I have a box that is 25. Oops, sorry about that. I have a box that is 25 by 25 by 75. Okay, now Let's go back over here and look at what we have. I will do the best I can to make sure you're looking at the right thing. Do I just jump in and start drawing circles and rectangles like a wild man and just kind of eyeballing it? No. I want these in precisely the right positions. And so just like I took two or three minutes to draw the picture on paper, to draw the picture on paper, before I opened up SketchUp. What I want to do is take a few minutes in SketchUp and give myself some guidelines that will help me put these things in. Okay. Now there's some things that I know. Okay. I know that I'm going to want some, who's your friend? Who's your friend? The tape measure is your friend. So I get the tape measure. I'm going to come down and I'm going to pop it to this corner. I know there's a lot of things that I need there that are going to be five millimeters up. So I come up along this edge, make sure you're snapped to this edge, and then I click. And then I give it the dimension, five, enter. Now this little mark is five <clears throat> millimeters from here. Now I want to draw a guideline. So I'll come to the face. I make sure that I'm clicked on the right, that I'm snapped to the right face. Let me zoom in a little bit. So you see I'm snapping to that edge. <clears throat> I click once. And then I come up here and then I click it. I can come over here and then you see I've got the crosshairs and I click it. Now this line is five millimeters from this bottom edge. Now I need to do the same thing here. <clears throat> Why am I doing this? Because everything in my picture is five millimeters from the top. So I'm giving myself a guideline there and a guideline here. So let's come back over here. This time we're going to go to this corner, wait till it snaps. Once it's snapped, then click once, come down. Don't care how far I come down, but just make sure it's snapped to that edge. Click again. Now what do I type? Five, enter. <clears throat> Remember we're working in millimeters. Now I come here. I'm on the edge. Make sure that you're snapped to the edge. Click once, come down. Okay. And then I'm going to come over here to make sure that it snaps there to that point. Boom. So now I've got a guideline all the way across, five millimeters from this edge, five millimeters from this edge. <clears throat> what would be another useful guideline to have? Well, I know that the center of the circle, the circle radius is seven and a half, and I have the edge five from the edge. So five and seven and a half is this magic 12 and a half number. And so I want sort of a point that's 12 and a, 12 and a half over and 12 and a half up is where I want the center point of the circle. So let's come back to our design and let me get my friend the tape measure. I come to the corner and I'm going to click on that corner and then I'm going to come out. Don't care how far, but just make sure that you're on the edge. Click and then 12 point five enter. Now I come to that point, I click to it, and I go up an arbitrary amount. I'm staying green, so I'm, per I'm parallel to that axis. Click again, and then what? 12.5. Why 12 and a half? Because I want to be five from the edge, and then I want seven and a half radius. Another seven and a half would take me here, and then another five would put me here, and that's going to add up to 25. So you see I'm keeping things symmetric. I want to do the same thing from this edge. And so I'm going to click on this point, on this corner, click once, come over on the red, you know, keeping it red on the edge, <clears throat> click. How far do I want that? I want that to be 12.5, enter. Okay. Now I click on, I lock onto that point, I click, and what do I come up? I tell it 12.5, 
enter. All right, now I've got the center. I've got a point for the center of the circles. <clears throat> I've got this guide point. Let's see if there's any other guidelines that would be useful. I think I am going to put one just right here at the 25 point and at the, the 25 from this edge and the 25 from that edge. Those might be useful guide points to have as well. So let's come back over here. <clears throat> and let's see if I can do that if I just come here to this face at the midpoint, come out. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. Edit, undo, draw line. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come out here, 25, type in 25, enter. And then I should come here. Now, let's see. I come to this point, which was 25, and then I draw up there. And I get one okay and then what do I I don't even have to put a dimension on that one ah you know what I did wrong undo I had the pencil I didn't have my tape measure so let me try this again so I'm going to come here and I'm going to come an arbitrary amount and then what do I type 25 enter I'm having some difficulty here let's try it up here so I'm going to come here get there, click, come out an arbitrary amount, tell it 25, and then enter. Okay, there is my little tick mark. And then let's see if I come down, it'll give me a guideline. Okay, now I click in the corner, I come out an arbitrary amount, click, and now I type in 25, enter. This, this mark here, this tick mark is 25. So I'm going to click there and I'm going to draw a guideline until it snaps onto here. Okay. So you see now that I have those guidelines and I'm sorry, uh, where I messed up is I got the pencil instead of the ruler and then that sort of threw me off. Okay. But now what do I have? I've got a cube or a rectangle that is 25 by 25 by 75. And now I am ready to come over and start drawing these things. Okay, and it should go really pretty quickly at this point because I've got uh, my guidelines in. Okay, if you are really smart, you could probably figure out how to do this referencing things that are already there, but I just like the guidelines because I'm kind of slow and it just makes it easier for me and it just took me a couple of minutes to put in. So now what do I want to draw? Let's look over here. I'm going to draw this circle. I've got the center point where it should be and I want the radius to be seven and a half. So let's come over here. Let's get the circle tool. Let's snap it to that center point there, which is right. And then I'm going to come out an arbitrary amount. Click again. How big should that be? 7.5 radius. Boom. And look what happens. That came exactly to that guideline and exactly to that guideline. Let's look and see here too. Let's go from the midpoint to that edge and look, you see how it's saying five millimeters. So we got everything right where we wanted it. And so that is most excellent. Okay, let's draw this other circle. So we come and we get the circle tool and we come over here and we snap it to the center point. We come out, we don't care how far. We type in the radius. What was the radius? 7.5 and then enter. And that looks perfect as well. We are making huge progress. Let's go back to our sketch. And what we see is at this guideline, I want this box to be five millimeters by 15 millimeters. And then similarly, uh, let's see. Yeah, all right. So. Let's come back over here, five by 15. And so this was the 25 mark. So we want to be five over from that because right, this was the 25 millimeter mark where we put that. Let me check that with the ruler. So if I come here to here, yeah, that's 25 millimeters. I'm going to click escape. And so I want to come over five from there. So I start here, I come over and I tell it five from there. So now I have a little tick mark at five. That should be where I build my uh, uh, rectangle. Same thing, I'm gonna come in five from this side, five, enter. And so now I've got two nice little corners to build my rectangles. We'll get the rectangle tool, pop it to that point, and then come up here, and then dimension it. How big do I want it? Five comma 15. Let's try that does not look right. So let's try 15 comma 5. 
Boom. All right, now I could draw another one here or I could just copy and move this one. Let's try copying and move this one. I'm going to select it. I'm going to get my move tool and then I'm not going to move it from this corner. I'm going to move it from this corner because I want this corner to be right here. So I come over here. I grab that corner. I start moving it. Uh-oh, it's moving and not copying. What do I do? I tap control one time. Boom. And now I have a copy of it that I bring over here there. All right. Now let's rotate this and look at it. This is really, really, really looking good. So let's come back over here. What did I want? I wanted this circle to be a hole that is how deep? 15. So now we will come back here and I showed you how to extrude and move things, but we're going to make it easy with the extrude or the push pull tool. We're going to get this. We're going to click here and then Ooh, escape. I messed up. I need to select this. Remember, deliberately use the palette. This had been selected, and so I push pulled what was selected. I got to push pull this. Get the push pull tool. Come down. It doesn't matter how far you come down, just come down a little ways, and then click enter a second time. Now I tell it the dimension 1 5, enter. Now I'll look down in that hole, and I know that's the right depth. So on this one, selection tool, select that, push pull tool, let's come down, but we don't have to measure it, we can just reference it. Do you see how it pops to that surface there where it says on face, now boom, that is the right dimension. Now use the select tool, come over here, select that, push pull tool, this one we want to come up, arbitrary amount, click again, what do I type? 15, enter, that's the right height. Now selection tool, get the circle. Now this one I'm going to reference to this. I'm not going to do it by dimensions. I'm just going to get the push pull tool. I'm going to pull it up. Ah, it's not happy. Let's see why it's not happy. Undo push pull. That was very strange. Okay, let's try it again. Kind of scares me when that happens because I'm not sure what's going on. Okay, let's get this. Okay, yeah, there. It was popping to something and wouldn't let me come up. Okay, so now I can go anywhere, but I'm going to reference it to this. Now, if I referenced it to that, it would be a hole of that depth or a hole of that depth. But I want it to come up to a height of that. Okay, boom. Guys, look at what we did. Look at what we did. This is pretty incredible. Let me get the rotate tool. Look at this. This is just a neat little three-dimensional design with holes and pins and slots and all kinds of things. I want you to think about what we did, guys. I want you to think about what we did. We started by doing it on paper. This is a pretty ugly drawing, but it's got what? It's got all the positions in all the dimensions and I kind of did it to be nice and symmetric. I took the 25 and I gave 5 margin on this end, 5 margin on that end. That left me 15 to work with in the middle and it came out to be just a really, really, really slick little device. And so what uh, maybe we can do really quickly is we can go ahead and we can export it as an STL. So I'm going to come over here. Remember, I think in lesson one or two, I showed you how to, you had to load the STL tool, the STL uh, uh, export feature and so you can export STL that is a plugin that you have to that you have to load okay so I've got this I'm going to say export and then I'm going to put it on the desktop because I put everything on the desktop I know it's bad but that's what I do so what we will call this is we will call this widget dot STL say save Okay, now we will come over and I will see if I can fire up Idea Maker with a little luck. Yep, there's Idea Maker. Let's see if I can drag and drop. You see how nice it is? There's my widget. Let's see if I, we can drag and drop it on there. Wow, look at that. And there is my widget. Let me go ahead and I am going to slice this thing. So let's say I'll say start. Okay, high quality. 
and yours is going to be different right everyone's is different but you should be loading this into your slicing software and then you need to get it over to the printer for me to get mine to the printer I just click uh, upload okay so let's try upload okay now I've got widget over here in my printer so now I can connect to my printer like I say this is going to be different for you this looks good connect to that printer <clears throat> ah it says all right I'll go to this it says hey you need to take the old one off so I got to go over there and fuss with the printer a little bit but you can see I just got to take care of that hit done and then just click print here and then I'll have a print out of this and so I won't uh, I won't make you wait for the print I'm going to end the lesson here but then in the next lesson what we are going to do is we will have this printed out and I'm going to show you how to use these calipers and so if you don't have digital calipers you need to go ahead and order you some you can probably find some for about 20 bucks but if you're going to be doing this you need to be able to design something you need to be able to print it and you need to then be able to measure it and so I'll have a link below on uh, on some nice calipers on the most excellent www toptechboy.com okay also you know you guys find a place if you're in most communities either the library or somewhere will have a 3d printer but find somewhere locally that you can do a 3d print and even if you are not able to have one in your house I guarantee you you're probably within a few miles of a 3d printer that you could just take a file in and print it out okay this has been lesson four a simple 3d design in uh, SketchUp and then in lesson five what we're gonna do is come back and do some uh, evaluation okay paul mcquarter toptechboy.com i will talk to you guys later